social norms are an interesting and quite fun thing to study. And it becomes even more fun when you observe the fact that the term social norm is used to mean completely different things in different fields of study, some of which are complete and utter pseudoscience. I am of course reminded of the conformity to masculine norms inventory and its so-called category of playboy behaviour. A behaviour that only 3% of the men who were questioned actually exhibited, the other 90-something percent being divvied up amongst categories such as breadwinner, caring, nurturing, protective, etc. But no, when you're a feminist academic and you've got a narrative to spin, 3%, that's a norm. That's what everyone is telling everyone else to do, and what everyone actually aims to do themselves. 3%. Anyway, in actual proper fields of study, the concept of a social norm is tested a little bit more robustly. So today we're going to look at an interesting primate study, specifically this one. Potent social learning and conformity shape a wild primate's foraging decisions. The abstract, as they are wont to do, gives us a very good overview of the entirety of the procedure. Conformity to local behavioural norms reflects the pervading role of culture in human life. Laboratory experiments have begun to suggest a role for conformity in animal social learning, but evidence from the wild remains circumstantial. Here we show experimentally that wild vervent monkeys will abandon personal foraging preferences in favour of group norms new to them. Groups first learned to avoid the bitter-tasting alternative of two foods. Presentations of these options untreated months later revealed that all new infants naive to the foods adopted maternal preferences. Males who migrated between groups where the alternative food was eaten switched to the new social norm. Such powerful effects of social learning represent a more potent force than hitherto recognised in shaping group preferences among wild animals. The study itself is actually quite short and simple. 109 vervet monkeys forming four whole groups in the wild. And in the territories of these four groups of monkeys, the researchers place two buckets of corn-based food. One with the corn coloured blue, one with the corn coloured pink. In two of those groups, they made the blue coloured corn distasteful to the primates, and in the other two groups, they made the pink coloured corn distasteful and these monkeys were subject to a three-month training session. So obviously, initially, the monkeys would try both of these buckets full of corn, and eventually they'd learn, oh well, the pink one tastes good, the blue one doesn't, we're only going to eat the pink one, and in the other groups they'd learn the other way around, that the blue one tastes good and the pink one doesn't. Of course, after this learning period, they didn't bother even trying the other food, they stuck with the food that they had learned was delicious. At the end of this learning period, the researchers then made both colours of corn palatable to the monkeys. The interesting thing is, they then stuck with their local preferences. And this was held to, to the point where 73% of all of the corn eaten was on the trained colour. The remaining percentage of corn that was eaten was then the colour which had previously been unpalatable. The interesting thing to note was that the monkeys that were eating the non-trained colour, they were always very low ranking. So even though at this time both these sources of corn are completely equal, the only difference is the colour, the monkeys developed a pseudo-class divide. The higher ranking monkeys got what they perceived as being the good stuff, while the lower rankers got what was socially perceived as the bad stuff, even though from a nutritional standpoint they're the same, and from a flavour standpoint they're the same. Across the length of the study, 27 infants were born and raised to the point where they could eat solid food. At that point, the obvious question comes up. Are they going to be adventurous little babies and shove everything that they can into their mouths to try and work out what's edible or not, or are they only going to eat what their parents give them to eat and then learn from that experience? Well, as it turns out, the answer is the latter. 26 of the 27 infants developed a taste for the locally preferred colour of corn. Even though, once again, the flavour has not been changed this time, both colours of corn taste the same, and yet 26 of the 27 infants 
only go for the colour of corn that their parents learned was best. Interestingly, the one infant which ate the off-colour corn, or the untrained colour of corn, that infant's mother was a very low-ranking female. And so it should come as no surprise if the only colour of corn that she can get is the wrong colour corn for that group, then it's no real surprise that her infant would pick up on that pattern of behaviour and then also eat the untrained colour. Across the study, there were 15 male immigrants. Ten of those were males who moved from one of the experimental groups to a different experimental group. And via some extremely fortuitous circumstance, they all moved to a region where the colour preferences were the opposite of what they came from. The other five males that came into this experimentation group were unknown to the researchers prior to their coming in. The first choice of seven of these males on approaching the food provisions after observing the others feeding was for the locally preferred option that was new to them, contrasting markedly with the eleven resident males, none of whom chose their formerly distasteful option. When each of the ten migrants first fed with no monkey higher ranking than themselves present, their preference for the locally consumed colour was even more pronounced. There was one single male that was the exception to this rule. That was the male who continued to eat the same colour as in his original group. His circumstance is quite unique in that when he joined the new group, he came in as the top-ranking male, coming in at the highest level of power in the group, almost certainly was an influential factor in his deciding to flout the social norm. Of the five males that came into the study who weren't known to the researchers previously, every single one of them went for the same choice as the local group, even though they were naive to both the colours of corn. So this study is interesting for a number of reasons mostly because it's giving us a strong, solid indication of conformity to norms in primates in a way that is not accidental, incidental, or coincidental. And it's also beginning to point us in directions that there may be times and circumstances where those norms aren't going to be adhered to as to that single male incident where they didn't take on the group norm. While it is a relatively small sample group of these animals, it has shown a distinct pattern of behaviour, and so this can be used in the future to design other studies to test different groups of these monkeys and see if these findings are consistent, which they should be, especially given that behavioural copying is something which happens quite frequently in the wild amongst a wide number of animals, humans included. And there is, of course, a variety of reasons for this. If you move to a new area, it's useful to see what other individuals are doing in that area so that you, in this case as a monkey, will know what food it is that you can eat, what food is safe, because there might be some sort of poisonous plant in this area that wasn't in the area you were in. There may be different predators in this area that you have to be aware of, and all sorts of other variables like that and in those situations, copying local expertise may prove to be the optimum survival strategy, overriding opposing knowledge gained in different habitats because it's no longer applicable in this one. Anyway, as a final farewell and fascinating fact about vervet monkeys, male vervet monkeys have blue balls. Yep, just a big old bright blue scrotum. Have fun trying to slip that into casual conversation without looking weird.